Mary's Kitchen. Today I want to make for you one of my favorite off-time recipes and it brings memories of my childhood with my father cooking in the kitchen. It's dad's meatballs and a homemade spaghetti sauce. It's something that takes a little bit of planning and buying but it comes together wonderful and you can have plenty of meals from it. So I'm going to give you step-by-step -step instructions. The recipe is going to be in my blog so you can go to the recipe anytime you want and also a video. So anyway, enjoy this recipe with me and we'll have it all finished at the end and you can taste it with me. Now when shopping for the ingredients for this great spaghetti sauce, make sure you get good quality products. Now I've done a lot of testing. My favorite is Cento. Cento always uses San Mazzaro tomatoes. They're the most famous plum tomatoes that come out of this. When products, I mentioned my favorite spaghetti because there is a difference too, unless you make it from scratch, which of course is the best, but if you don't have time, this is my favorite, Di Secco. It's again imported from Italy. It uh, cooks up the best and it's absolutely my favorite spaghetti and they have all the different types. So try this one. Now these are the ingredients. What this recipe calls for is three 28 ounce cans of the San Mazzaro whole peeled tomatoes, two tablespoons olive oil, one half Vidalia onion chopped, one half green pepper chopped, two garlic cloves finely chopped, 12 to 15 fresh basil leaves, salt and pepper to taste. So we'll put it together, get it all measured, and you'll see it cooking. What you need to do is one can at a time, put it in your food processor, and blend it well, just for a couple of minutes. It doesn't take long. And then pour it into a bowl to be used later. Okay, you always heat your pot a little bit before you put in your oil. Make sure it's on medium heat, it's hot, and I'm adding around a fourth a cup of olive oil. Usually I eyeball it, but since I'm measuring for you guys, I wanted to measure it. Let that heat up a couple minutes. Now that my olive oil is hot, I want to add my onions and start to sweat them. So you put your pre-measured onion, remember it's a half an onion, and let that kind of fry up a little. Takes total of all this might take around eight minutes. Okay, once that in, then I'm going to add my green peppers, the half of a green pepper. Now I'm not going to put my garlic until this is a little softened because the garlic doesn't take long and you don't want to burn it. So we'll let that simmer for around five minutes. Now that it's nice and translucent, it's been around five minutes, then I can add the chopped garlic. You sure don't want that to burn. So that just cooks for around a minute or so. So I'll keep it cooking. And you can see what it should look like. Keep you know, stirring it around. It's been around a minute and a half. Everything looks good. Now this is the tomatoes that we put in our food processor. So we're just adding all of that sauce right into the big pot. Let's give it a stir. So this is your basis of your sauce. Now we want to flavor up this a little bit. So it's important that you add salt. Now this is two teaspoons of salt, and I use the pink Himalaya salt. I'm going to taste it afterwards and see if I need more. So that's two teaspoons of salt and one teaspoon of black pepper. And one teaspoon of Italian blend seasoning. This has oregano, thyme, some sage, and it's just a combination. Gives it a little 
nice flavor. So we're going to stir all that up. And it's very important that you taste your food. This is a clean spoon, of course. I have everything blended. I always taste everything because you know as a chef you have to have a palate that detects the flavor, if it's too salty or not. That's perfect. I'm not going to add any more salt uh, at this point. I might at the end, but right now it's just got to cook. The flavors have to come together. So I'm going to be simmering this for around an hour. I'll check it every so often and stir it. But after that time, you're going to really have some good flavors that have melted together. And then, of course, I'll be adding the meatballs. Doing the meatballs, always get all your ingredients all together. Make sure you have real Italian parsley, good Italian oil, salt and pepper, eggs, Adaya onion, garlic, two pounds of good, at least sirloin, and grated Parmigiano-Reggiano cheese. Okay, you have to have two garlic cloves. I always smash them. So, the recipe calls for two garlic cloves. Ready? Okay, we're just gonna chop that up finely. in your little side dish. And also, one fourth cup of Italian parsley. Now make sure it's flat leaf and it's not curly. And having all the uh, ingredients all together, scooped up, measured, is the most important thing. Measuring one fourth a cup of parsley. It's been chopped. Picking up all the pieces and putting it in my prep bowl. To the two pounds of lean ground meat, you add two garlic cloves, finely minced, one fourth cup Italian parsley, again minced, one half cup Italian breadcrumbs, one third cup. Parmigiano Reggiano cheese, three eggs beaten, three fourth cup milk, and salt and pepper to taste. Okay, now we're going to, I always put gloves when I'm mixing the uh, hamburger. We're going to be mixing our meatballs. And we have some two pounds of good ground chuck. Now this is actually ragu beef because I ordered it it's supposed to be the best beef possible, so we'll see. You have to roll each of the meatballs, uh, you know, to the size you like. I like them a little in the larger size. So you make all your meatballs, and then you put them aside so that you're going to be ready to fry them. You want to fry them in batches so that they're not crowded into the uh, frying pan. And as soon as the bottom side gets a pretty brown, I'm going to turn them over. Okay, these are all fried up, ready to go into the sauce. That'll be the next step. Now this has been simmering for around an hour. It has gotten thicker and the aroma is just terrific. So I'm gonna stir it one last time here. You can see it's thicker and richer. Then I'm gonna add my meatballs. These are from 
but I just made very simple, gently. I'm tossing them or putting them in the sauce. Okay, they're all in there. I say I made around 20. I'm going to cover them, stir them, so make sure they're all in there and it's covered and sunk in, totally covered with sauce. I put the lid back on and I'm putting the temperature up to medium, a little over medium, so that we can get a good bubbling in there again. So I'll come back in a few minutes and check. As you can see, it doesn't take long. Temperature's back up to a boil. Very low simmer, really. And that's even gonna flavor the sauce more. Perfect, perfect thickness. Okay, nothing else to do but cover it and let it cook. After the meatballs are done, you have to come back and add 15 julienne fresh basil pieces. And to julienne, all you do is roll two or three of the leaves together like a cigar and then chop it horizontally and it gives you little ribbons. So add this at the very end and let it simmer for a few more minutes and then it's ready to serve. Thing you want to do. I've already cooked my spaghetti for around 11 minutes and strained it. Always save around a cup full of the cooking water because you're going to need it back in there. And what we're going to do now, just a little bit, is add around two scoops of the sauce into the spaghetti. Well, I'm going to put three. Okay, start mixing it around. And then some of the cheese. What we're doing is actually marrying the spaghetti. So we don't want to serve just plain spaghetti. It just starts absorbing some of those flavors from the sauce and the cheese. And it tastes so much better when you serve it and you put it on the plate. If I see it needs a little bit more sauce, I add it. Now's the time you're just kind of adding flavor to the spaghetti. It will start absorbing the sauce now. So when it's served, it's just that much better. A little bit more. There's no amount. Just some to eyeball to make sure it starts absorbing the flavor. And that's it. That was the job today. We got it all done and now we're going to have the rewards. I've got it plated. We're going to give it a taste. Let's see. The sauce is thick. It's perfect. Just the right amount of heat. Let's try a meatball. Perfectly cut. One is enough. Mm. It's cooked perfectly. It's soft, it's moist. Hmm, yep. Yeah. I think you're gonna like it. Mm.